Welcome into a daily editorial here on the KE Report. I am chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. And Jordan, let's focus on the overall gold sector. We'll start off with the actual gold price. It has been in a nice uptrend ever since October when the U.S. market started to break down. But quite frankly, if you look at the medium term to longer term charts, we're still very much in a range, especially for that monthly chart going the whole way back to 2013. And in terms of the weekly chart, something that Chris Kimball and I were chatting about, still in this downtrend. Yes, it's close to breaking above this downtrend, but it's not there yet. What do you have to say about that? Yes, Corey. Well, the real key for gold is I'd like to see it break above 1300 and then rally up to that 1350 1360, you know, whatever level you want to call it, there's that big wall of resistance there. I think if gold can at least get up to that wall, um, if it can get up to it again, that's going to signal that it's it's signaled to the market and market participants that it's tested the wall many times in recent years and that it's ready to break. So I think, you know, breaking the wall is going to be easier than at this point, maybe breaking 1300 to 1310. That's pretty stiff resistance. Uh, the last two weeks, gold tested 1300 and closed well off both weeks. So the weekly candles look kind of bearish. I mean, depending on there's still one day of trading left this week, you know, this, if, if it goes down tomorrow, the weekly candle would probably be a little bearish. So you could have three bearish candles in a row. So I don't see any. Um, chance that gold is going to break a breakout above 1300 or 1310 is imminent. I don't see that. The same can be said for silver and $16. Um, so I just, yeah, yeah, I don't, gold has basically been in this big range for seven years while the rest of the sector has been in a clear downtrend and is, and still is. I know we're going to talk more about that, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the key for gold now is at 1300 level. And I, I think it's going to pull back and I'm looking at, um, the 200-day moving average at 1254. Uh, there's also pretty good support around 1240. So those are the levels that I'd be looking at if gold breaks below 1280, 1285. And last point, on a fundamental basis, as long as the Fed doesn't signal that it could hike or the market thinks the Fed could hike at some point this year, um, I think in that case, gold is probably going to hold above 1240, and you won't have to worry about that much weakness. Okay, so that's a key distinction as long as the Fed sticks to this pause mentality, but so much of that just depends on the U.S. markets. It's interesting to hear you break down some of those levels that you're watching around 12. 50, 1260, and then even down to 1240. Those are some moving averages that I've been watching, especially on the weekly chart, which are close to the 50 week and the 200 week. What other moving averages are you paying the closest attention to for simply the gold price? Well, usually I look at uh, the 200 day and the 400 day moving average. The 400 day moving average is generally equivalent to about 80 weeks on the weekly. And then on the monthly chart, I would follow the 20 month and the 40 month moving averages, the 40 month moving average for gold. Um, if you just go back and you look at the last 30, 40 years, that's been a very, very significant moving average. So in the bigger picture, those are the ones that I'm watching. Um, I haven't been in front of a chart here for several hours cause you know, I've been on the road, but, um, so I'm not really sure where those moving averages are at the moment. Probably in the mid, you know, I'd guess in the mid 1200 somewhere. So it, it's even more that further illustrates that we, as bulls, we'd want to see gold hold above, you know, maybe test 1240, hold above it, and then hold above the 200 day at 1254. If if gold can kind of base between 1250 to 1300 over the next few months, that would be a really encouraging sign. Okay, to your point, that 40-month moving average sitting right at 1250. So we're seeing a lot of these moving averages at very tight ranges, all very close to each other. As long as the metal can stay above that as they pull back, then obviously that is encouraging for the bulls. But if there is a break below there, are you worried of a fast decline or would it just then turn that 
support into resistance and we just could be into the sideways move for a while longer well i i think it's i mean a sideways move is bullish as long as we hold above uh 1240 and then base above the 200 day moving average you know as far as you know even if the fed has one more hike um i i don't know if um, it, it, it's tough because I, I don't have a direct answer for that. I, I just, it, it's probably the wrong thing for me to say cause I'm supposed to know, but honestly, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not that, con- but even I'll tell you just, I'm not that concerned if there's one more hike left. Sure. We'd probably see some weakness, you know, maybe we see a retest of the, uh, recent lows, uh, in the summer of 2018. Um, you know, m- maybe the miners would retest that and gold would make a higher low. But I, even if that happens, Corey, I'm re- I'm really not that concerned. I mean, I, I in the big picture, we know that the, the Fed probably only has, if they hike, they probably only have one more hike left, maybe two if they're really lucky. And I, I'm just, you know, maybe they'll hike once. I'm really not that concerned whether they hike once or they don't hike. I feel pretty good about precious metals, you know, setting up for, um, you know, a really good 2020. And, and maybe a good back half of this year um, if, you know, March is the last hike or if last December was the last hike. So even if we do get um, some kind of a, a, a leg down, I think it would really be the last of the selling that we've seen over this last couple of years. And I think it would, it would turn into a, a potential bear trap, to be honest. That's very encouraging because I know anyone who has followed around with what you and I have been talking about through 2018, most of that year you were show, telling us just how weak the sector looked. And sure enough, we got that breakdown. So now that you're saying there is still some strength here and as long as we can hold above these key levels, that will be in the long run very bullish, but still will take some time. Let's also talk about some of the stocks. You and I are, or well, you both, you just traveled into Vancouver and there are a couple of resource investment conferences going on this weekend. I know from talking to a lot of these companies, money is still relatively tight in the sector. It's not easy for a lot of companies to be raising money. But some of the charts, a very select few of these select miners and explorers have been moving higher. Overall, GDX, though, still within this downtrend. What do you take away from a couple stocks outperforming the market, but still a number of stocks continuing to struggle? Well, the fact that some stocks are continuing to struggle is a sign of um, that the market is not in a bull market yet. And specifically, uh, I would urge the listeners, just pull up a chart of GDX and GDXJ, type in the 400-day moving average, go back to 2010, and look at that. And you can clearly see this recent rally has stopped for both GDX and GDXJ right at their 400-day moving averages. And I just pulled up GDX right now, and I'm looking at it. In early 2011, uh, the last leg up before the peak, uh, support in early or mid-2011 was a 400-day moving average. Then at the end of, uh, or the beginning of 2012, GDX failed right there at the 400-day, failed again in the summer of 2012, and then its next failure during the bear years was 2014. And it had another failure in early 2015. And, you know, eventually it surged through it in early 2016, as we know. Uh, the 400-day for both GDX and GDXJ, it, it kind of provided support at the end of 2016 and that December low. And you look at what happened in 2018, both GDX and GDXJ failed at the 400-day several times before we had that sharp leg down in the summer. And now we've rallied back up to it again, and we failed again. So it's it's clear that this is this is a good a, a good test of you know are we in a bull market or are we in a bear market? And uh, or, or I mean it's kind of semantic saying that I, I prefer downtrend now rather than bear market. So we're we're still in a downtrend. If you look at GDX and GDXJ, there's no way around it. That being said, we're not talking about something Corey that is going to last another couple years or you know another year i don't see that happening but we have to respect that fact that the overall sector is still in a long-term downtrend and you know a couple other points on that uh the gdx advanced decline line 
that's been flashing a pretty big negative divergence over the last couple of months. And, you know, that, that to me has been a market is not ready to break out and launch into a new bull here. And that's something that we're going to have to watch over the next couple of months. If we see, um, because you mentioned the strong stocks, they're in, they're in good shape and they've been driving this move. What we need to see over the next several months is will the weaker parts of the sector, will the weaker stocks start to stabilize on their charts and just stop going down and they start to stabilize and perhaps build a base and maybe you see signs of a slight uptrend there. When that happens, the overall breadth of the sector is going to get stronger and that can be a leading signal that the sector is getting ready to move into a bull market. But again, where we are here and now, uh, not quite there yet because the advanced decline line for GDX is still weak. Now, with respect to some stocks being strong, one thing to take into account, Corey, is the gold price denominated in other currencies, especially in, in Canada and Australia. Um, it's really strong. So if you're operating in Canada and Australia, like Kirk, Kirkland Lake Gold is, their costs um, are not, I mean, they're, their costs are going down because of those weak currencies. So for companies, as long as they're not operating in the U.S. right now, and if they're operating in Canada and Australia, you know the, the, the local gold prices in those places uh, are, are very strong. I mean, they're not that far away from their 2011 highs. So the economics of mining you know, outside of the U.S. right now uh, are quite a bit better than if you're mining in the U.S., and we know that the oil price has plunged, so energy costs are much lower. So these are also some factors that have to be taken into account. They do, but there is some reason to be optimistic, but again, not optimistic in the sense where we think this is just going to go straight up. There is still some work to be done, but it is encouraging at least to see testing out upper part of these downtrends rather than lower parts of these downtrends, which unfortunately did happen at the middle to tail end of 2018. Overall, though, Jordan, interesting comments. Good having you on the show. And I think some very level-headed technical looks at where the gold sector currently is and still the work to be done. Jordan, good chatting with you. Thanks for taking some time today.